Marco Garcia says, I am having trouble with starting this problem. So it says, find the absolute extrema of f of x, where f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 raised to the 1 third, and that is going to be on the interval of 0 to 2. Okay, so to identify the absolute extrema, we need to identify the critical points. To identify the critical points, we need to be able to identify the derivative. Once we identify the derivative, our critical points are going to be when our derivative is equal to zero or when we're going to have, or sorry, or when it's undefined, all right? So first thing we need to do is understand, well, how are we going to apply the derivative of two X minus one equals one third? The one thing I recognize here is this is a function inside of another function. So therefore, when you have a function inside another function, you're going to have to use the chain rule, all right? So let's go and break this down. First of all, let's remember what the chain rule is. So the chain rule is when I have a function inside of another function, okay? So there's two functions that we have going on here. We have x to the one third, and we have a two x minus one. Now, if I wanna find the derivative of this function, what you're simply gonna do is take the derivative of your outside function, plug back in your inside function, and then you're gonna multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. So let's go and see if we can recreate this f g of x using these two functions. So in my example, I have f of x is equal to x to the one third, and g of x is equal to a 2x minus one. And think about composition, right? This is why we spend so much time understanding composition of the functions. If I plug 2x minus one into my f of x function, I'm gonna get exactly what I have here, all right? So now let's go ahead and identify the derivative. So to find the derivative, uh, we're gonna have to use that power rule, bring down the, bring down the uh, fraction. So it's gonna be, so let's do, so this is f prime of x is going to equal, so take your power, bring it down to the front. We're still gonna have our inside function. And then remember, when you bring down the power, you have to subtract one. So one, one third minus one is going to be a negative, two thirds, and then we need to multiply that times the derivative of g of x, which is just going to be two. Now remember when you have a negative power, you can rewrite that as positive by putting it in the denominator. So therefore I'm gonna have a two in the numerator and this three is in the denominator. So here is going to be what the derivative is going to look like. So three times a two x minus one raised to the two thirds power, okay? Um, okay, so now we need to identify the critical points. So the critical points are going to occur when um, f prime of x is equal to zero and when it's going to be undefined. So let's go and see when would f uh, prime of x equal to zero. So we, we can do is replace that equal to zero and see if it's ever gonna work. So zero equals a two divided by three times a two x minus one raised to the two thirds. Now you didn't really need to write it out, but I wanted to show you guys. Well, the first step you need to do to solve is you'd multiply the denominator on both sides and then you're gonna get zero is equal to two. So whenever you have a constant um, as your numerator, you're never going to, your critical point's not gonna occur when f prime of x at, is at zero, okay? So therefore, um, this is, we do not have a critical point um, from there, f prime is not gonna equal zero. Now let's go and look at when it's going to be undefined. So when we have a function and we have a variable in the denominator, we know our function is going to be un undefined when our denominator is equal to zero. So therefore, I'll have a three times a two x minus one raised to the two thirds, we want to find the values when X is going to equal to zero. Okay, so you could divide by three on both sides and you get two X minus one raised to the two thirds equal to zero. You can multiply by a three halves on both sides. Let's just actually do that just so not confusing you guys. So I multiply by three halves on both sides. You don't really need to do all this work, but just want to show you guys what I'm doing. So therefore you're not asking questions. So two X minus one is equal to zero. Add one, divide by two, X is equal to one half. Now that we have our critical point, we need to make sure we can verify that it's going to be an extrema. And basically the definition that I'm going to follow through an extrema is either if it's an absolute maximum, that means points to the left and to the right are going to be below that value. And if it's going to be an absolute minimum, that means points to the left and to the right of that value 
are going to be um, above that value. So what we're going to need to do is take this value of x equals one half and plug it back into our original function, f of x equals 2x minus 1 raised to the 1 third. So in this case, I have f of x is equal to a 2x minus 1 raised to the 1 third. Now, if I go ahead and plug in f of 0, then that's going to be 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. And remember, this is the cube root. So the cube root of negative 1, uh, I'm sorry, of 1 half is that's going to be zero. So the cube root of zero is just going to be zero. Now, here's the important thing. So what we need to do is pick two points, not on the endpoints, but pick another point like um, it's like to the to the left of uh, one half, maybe like one fourth, or we could go and pick another point that's going to be to the right of it that's in an interval like one. And if we can verify those two points are going to be below this um, point, then we can verify this would be a absolute maximum. But it's just saying, because that's what we're trying to look for, right? Yeah, what is the absolute extrema? Or it could be a minimum if they're both to the left and to the right. The problem with this graph is when you plug those points in, what you're going to notice is the point to the left is going to be below it because this is the cube root. So I can think of those. The point to the left is going to be below and a point to the right of one half, again, between one half and two, any point to the right is going to be above this value. So therefore, on the interval of zero to two, this graph is always going to be increasing. So therefore, for this problem, there is no absolute extrema.